This is definitely one of this year's best fights. I don't necessarily mean biggest. There isn't a lot of razzmatazz about this. There are, they aren't huge names. Canelo Charlo, of course, the fight we just had. That was, in quotation marks, a, a bigger fight. But this is a genuinely interesting, hard-to-call, domestic dust-up. Two guys who bring football followings with them, which means a lot here in the UK. I think Josh Warrington's fan base, what, 80 plus percent of it has got to be guys who support Leeds United. And when that sort of situation is brought into the boxing ring, you get this added sense of pride and I definitely can't lose, like they're both defending their territory. And so that's got to put the afterburners, I think, on this contest to make them both really go for it. Now, a lot of people have been scratching their heads and asking why is Josh Warrington getting another world title opportunity considering he never cleaned up the mess with Maurizio Lara, that he did lose his last one against Alberto Lopez. Why is he going straight into another world title shot? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I guess he knows the right people. Some fighters just get given more shots than others. <laughs> That's how it works. For what it's worth, the WBA rankings right now have got Josh Warrington at number seven. But the fight's going ahead. It's not like we think this is going to be a dud. The main thing is we're looking at both of these guys right now on paper and we're saying this looks like a solid matchup. And it's the 35-year-old Lee Wood who seems to be the consistent favourite in this fight. I've checked out a lot of interviews with trainers and fighters and 80% of the time they're going for Wood. Not by much, but they're going for him. It's probably got a lot to do with momentum. He is a guy who has matured for the better in his later years. Uh, like a cheese, like a wine. Because he can work behind a jab, he's got more time to collect himself. He's worked on nice little things like the sneaky uppercut that he floored Maurizio Lara with in the rematch. Uh, he knows how to deal with a crisis like he showed against Conlon. He's probably not quite as worn as Warrington is, who always has to, of course, slightly force his work. And because Wood is the one with more pop, <laughs> not much of an achievement when you're against Warrington. <laughs> Although admittedly, I think Warrington's pop is a little bit underrated. But Wood does have a better dig in both hands. And when this fight gets late, in that period where he's shown a lot of efficiency in stopping fighters late, if Warrington gets a bit raggedy, that's where Wood could really put the nail in the coffin. Both guys seem very complimentary towards the other one. Uh, maybe they're somewhat similar characters. So far, Josh Warrington has given Lee Wood a little birthday cake. <laughs> Lee Wood has spoken about how what Warrington did against Selby, Frampton and Galahad is probably better than anything he's done. And I don't think he's just trying to be overly nice and disarm him, kind of like an Andy Ruiz to Joshua. I think Lee's just calling it down the middle. That's the kind of guy he is. And of course, he's got no problem telling Warrington to his face, look, I'm just a bit better than you. And when the question was put to him of, look, is Josh Warrington a dirty fighter? Uh, I think it was Addy who was the host. He was saying, no, I don't think he is. Um, I mean, I guess that's being as kind as you can possibly be. Now, I don't think, of course, Josh purposefully headbutts people. But he's got into this habit, I think, of being more reckless with his head. You can, what he, he, does, he just dives into range, head down. Yes, a little bit like a billy goat. <laughs> I think part of it is because what happened with him against Lara in that first fight, the way he got caught in the mid-range, he wants to try and eliminate that opportunity and so just tries to eat up the gap very quickly. But of course, in doing that, he'll often hit you with his head. He's rationalised it before saying, look, I just, I'm just i a come-forward guy who keeps my chin down. It's going to happen. Um, it does happen with other fighters. It just t tends to happen more when it comes to Warrington. But of course, both Lee Wood and Ben Davidson, the trainer, they're under no illusions that this manoeuvre's come in for them. <laughs> the billy goat is come in. And so they're going to be looking to measure that forehead, touch it, wait for that little sharp a coverage of ground, maybe try and walk him onto an uppercut. And where Lee Wood was also complimentary, uh, and you could say maybe realistic, because he's trying to expect the best Josh Warrington here, is that he mentioned the last fight against Lopez. It was close. And also, Lopez might be the best featherweight right now. So he was trying to put it all in context. And one thing that did get lost in that fight is because everyone was so busy saying, look, Josh Warrington is dirty. He's always using his head. He looks like a space raider. <laughs> I think you get that one on every single Josh Warrington video. Well, in the last few rounds, he did make it closer. He, he committed himself. Whether you like the flavor of his work or not, 
he gets stuck in. He's a very willful and tough fighter. Um, Lopez can punch. He took those shots. He still had some pace. That is what is going to give him the best shot to possibly beat Lee Wood. It is pace. It's always been his number one weapon. And that is what he's got to call upon when this fight very probably gets into the double figures. For the majority who are leaning towards Wood, they probably envision a bit of a shop war Warrington, getting a bit raggedy, and maybe walking into something big to give Wood another late round stoppage. For me, what's hard to call and really determine with this fight is because Warrington's so good at sticking to your chest, I don't know how Wood is going to handle that. What are the deterrents they've whipped up in the gym to try and handle it? Nobody ever seems to be able to get away from Warrington mugging them in some fashion or another. And in those later rounds, as he's shown time and time again, he will just keep going and going. He will wrestle with you happily, and maybe he will butt you. But if he doesn't get disqualified, now you've got blood running down your face, and now he's pushing for the win. This is a tough one. I think I still feel a little bit guilty for the fact I didn't pick Warrington for his fight against Selby or Frampton. Here he is again, he's the underdog. And I think he's definitely still got the ability to bring it for 12 hard rounds. The reflexes might not be quite the same. He might rely a little bit more now on the rough stuff than just trying to outfine you. But he is still a handful. And Lee might not be fully ready, even though he's been watching the tapes and getting ready for the billy goat. <laughs> he, he might not be fully ready for it. And so, possibly a little bit more with my heart than my head, I'm leaning towards Warrington to take this one down the stretch and just edge things on the cards. But how do we all see this one going? What's going to happen to the winner and the loser? I mean, Josh Warrington, obviously, he'll get another title shot. <laughs> But Lee Wood, if he wins, is he going to try and wipe up another Mexican mess in Alberto Lopez? How do you see it all panning out? 